Tell me who's hot, who's not, who really on top, who got they on shop, the hustle don't Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, none, you know, my day will go on. But I want y'all to definitely tap in, follow, share our content on all social media platforms. We're on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, we're on it. But go to our Patreon channel. That's where you're going to find our full-length interviews after a while. We have the membership fees. Go Even on our YouTube, we got that too. But that's the only place you're going to find our full-length interviews. So if y'all want to see it, y'all got to tap in, support you got to support, got you to know, support. at the end of the day, we, like I said, we do this on our own dime. So, hey, man, check it, man. We down here in H-Town, man. It's going down, man. Hey, and guess what, man? God done blessed us, man, with a jewel, man, a couple of jewels. You know what I'm saying? I've been wanting to talk to these guys. I done went to L.A. <laughs> trying to find A.D. Man, I, and people saying, man, when you going to get him? I'm bragging about it at the Cadillac house this morning. <laughs> man, I got A.D. <laughs> and then the nigga say, you got smack? You know smack? I said, yeah, that nigga, I think he said that nigga with him. Yep. <laughs> I said, yeah. man, he said, man, that nigga got a good conversation. And this was Mexican dudes, man. So you guys, man, check it, man. Y'all already know I done said the names, man. My boy AD, my yes. boy Smack in the yes, building, sir. man. What's, What's going man? on, man? What's good, wow. man? Is this y'all first time down here in H-Town? Nah. nah. Oh, y'all run these streets. I already know y'all jump in a plane in a minute. We, 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 we ain't been here in a minute, though, but we been having fun. <laughs> we been having fun. Say, man. So, I mean, how important is it, man, that with, with you guys growing your platform, how important, is, and I know you're going to stop me, but how important is, is it for y'all to move around and, and go to different places? Um, It's part of the job, though. Okay. I mean, I feel like my whole, my whole pool has always been network. That's been my biggest, my biggest uh, tool in the game, just, just networking. Stay networking, stay meeting new people, building new opportunities. Man, uh, right. I'm gonna, uh, Mr. Jamaica, I'm not going to do you like that because I know already I get to talking. I'll leave you behind. I'm, I'm going to let you talk to him. <laughs> I'm going to let you do it now. You better get what you get in. Smack is here. Okay, AD is here. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. You know, we women, we like to know y'all as a person. It's not always mm -hmm. about it, who you are on you know, the screen and stuff like that. So were you born and raised California? Born and raised, yep. Compton, California. Compton, California. Uh -huh. And you? South Central. South Central. Yes. Wow. What's the difference like people who don't know the difference between the two. That's a that's a good question right there because people always say that. So South Central is technically Compton is a part of South Central. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's um, L.A. County. So basically, you have different cities. So like, we have like our territories. That's where you consider where we're from. So if you hear somebody say hey, you from L.A., be like no, nah, I'm from Compton. Mm -hmm. It's still Los Angeles though, but they for get the most very part, very defensive. Yeah. Like. I just say California because I'm like, so I don't get it wrong. But they're like, no, you can't say L.A. It's like, I'm not from L.A. I'm from Compton or I'm from here. Compton, they, they be tripping. Oh, I didn't so interview too stuff. many of these dudes, man. Watts, Long Beach, and South Central. So where Smack is from, that's considered like, we consider L.A. Okay. When, when you from L.A., that's when we say, that's L.A. Okay. Man, yeah. I be saying, but, I think I said this morning when I was talking about my partner that got to a restaurant in Culver City. Uh -huh. I don't even know if that's L.A. or what. I say in L.A., nigga. Yeah. Culver City, <laughs> <laughs> but it ain't in L.A., is it? Uh, what would you say, City. Culver City? That's L.A. Huh? That's LA. Yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't mess that up because I showed nah, said I'm like, is, LA. It, is it in it L.A.? It's South Central, yeah, it but it's Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But Man, then when, um, like, for people who don't know anything about California, Compton, all of those areas, when I hear about South Central or Compton, I'm thinking about gangs, violence. Like, I'm not supposed to even go down there. Don't even let me stay up here in the tourist areas. Is it really like that or people can come through and, like, check it out? Because when they see it on TV, people are like, I do want to see it, but I'm scared. Should they come? Should they not come? Because when you think about Jamaica, people are like, oh, no, I'm going to stay in the tourist areas of Jamaica because I hear on Jamaica they be killing, they be doing this, they be doing that. They do. But, no, not everywhere <laughs> yeah, in Jamaica, they do. Though. Yeah, they do. I've been. It's, I know. I'm going no. in a few months. Been, they do. I've been in Jamaica. I had a great time. Right, yeah, but you stayed. You, you, you knew who you was with, though. True. You didn't go where you need to be, did you? I ain't going anywhere. And you anywhere. can't stop at the stoplight at night. No. Nope. You got to go through that whole flow. And you got to keep going. They tell you. Ain't that, that what they tell me? Yeah. Don't stop at the stoplight at night. What that mean, wow. guys? That means some danger. Ride. That mean yeah, we stopping in L.A.? We stopping in Vegas. We stopping in Chicago. Depends on what part, I bet you. Oh, no. We stopping everywhere, but... No, nah, it depends on what part. No, nah, they might shoot See? your car up or something, but <laughs> y'all niggas can't stop at no lights yeah. at night. No, no. Depends on what part. Downtown, downtown, downtown Kingston is where no. we was at. Well, downtown, you can't. 
But well, certain parts you can. God dang. I feel like Jamaica is probably worse than anything in the United States. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, nah, wow. but for the but for the most part, I think every place has its good and it has its bad. That's mm. right. You know, it's, it's the energy that you're bringing. Because it's, it's a lot of, like, just like having a Nipsey mural. Like, there's people who come from all over the world. Right. They go take pictures and stuff. Right. They have no problems going in and out. And, you know, that's considered a hood, though. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. All walks of life go through there. It's no problem. Man. But, I, and it's bad to say this, and this is me. I say whatever I think, Okay. Because a lot of times I tell people I don't know. So the only way you're going to learn is by you asking questions. Right. But um, the people who come and take pictures and do all of this stuff, if they're white and they're coming in those areas, they don't, nobody don't even mess with them. But True. if you black, they want to, you know, probably question you. Depends on what color you have, how you look, all, all of that sort of stuff. Why is that so? Self-hatred. We hate ourselves. Right. We've been tricked mm. for a long period of time. And, you know. It's up to people like us in these positions to sit there and educate the youth and show them it's a different type of way. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the young brothers going, growing up now, they're a lot smarter than they was before. And, you know, it's just, I mean, especially where we come from, back in the days, like, Bloods and Crips couldn't get to, couldn't be cool with each other and stuff. And now you may see, you know, Crips and Bloods, they they tighter than anybody now. Right. right. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's, it was a lot of division, a lot of self hatred, and I feel like now it's getting better. But um, you guys, man, like I say, man, when I see y'all, man, I, I really I'm proud of what you guys represent, man, because you guys are the you like like Mr. Servon told me, y'all y'all the black media, man. You guys mm -hmm. are the are, are, are who people listening to. Our youth is listening to y'all, man, and I'm listening and looking at you guys as well because the way you guys scale, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, with no jumper and all that. You guys hit added so much over there that I I seen it, bro, and and I I, I admired it, and but I also I wanted to make sure because y'all my people like is uh, what's going on, with that? <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I just felt like I, that was the biggest thing with me, and and I know already you guys are are, are are young men, and and to be honest with you, when you're older, you look at that like, am I did I do my job? So um, growing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say smack? Or no, you, I, this oh, you is the question to both of them. Yeah, okay. I'm asking the same question. I want to hear it because y'all from the two different sides. Two different so sides, yeah. I need to know the answers differently. Um, growing up, what did you want to be? Because I know that this is not what you wanted to do as a kid growing up. Um, I just always wanted to be, I just wanted to be a rapper. That was it. And just not necessarily just like, I used to look up to Ice Cube. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I want to be a rapper. You know, I want to transition into movies and all type of stuff like that. So that was always like a dream and a passion for me. No, as a kid, I, I, you, you did, did all of kid, that. All your, yeah, all your I used life. to. I used to just write raps. Um, I used to. My my grandmother, rest in peace. She used to have these uh, lectures. She used to work for the uh, Compton Unified School District, and she used to have all these lectures on cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. I used to find her old cassette tapes that was under the bed, and I would just record my favorite uh, songs on the radio mm -hmm. and just, you know, copy them and try to rap and sound like them, like DJ Quick and Pac, Corrupt, Snoop, all the all the West Coast OGs and um, just started writing raps, got into that, and, like, around MySpace, had a little Mickey Mouse mic, you know, sound recorder on the uh, computer and just started uploading my songs to MySpace and then just keep doing Did things like that. Did you end up getting, like, a deal at all? Um, I, had a, I had a couple deals. So yeah. what happened with it? Um, I mean, the independent, the independent route. It has, back then, it wasn't independent. Independent wasn't a thing back then. Um, I ain't that old. <laughs> <laughs> but but see, the thing is, that she she walking down the dark road right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest with you, if you ain't Beanie Man, if you ain't Bougie Bonton, and one of them, she is not understanding. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna. I already know you do music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I done been studying. Yeah. She usually don't jump over there. She's supposed to be at your house asking you, hey, man, was you married? Uh, did your daddy <laughs> marry this? She don't supposed to be over there, but now she's in the music, so I'm going to let her go. Let's get it. Okay. Okay. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, growing up, your mom and dad, were you raised in the same household, or were no. you the statistic? Statistic? Um, Pops and my mom's Wasn't together They broke up around I want to say I was nine Nine Or eight Okay so they were together for a while And we stayed in my grandmother's house 
And and they was together for a while, but you know, when you nine, you a baby, you don't remember mm. none of that stuff. Oh, so you don't remember a lot of it? Nah, my dad wasn't. Uh, he was he was out he was out hustling he was out mm. getting it so yeah. But your mom, she was more because I always tell people being a mom. It's very, very instrumental for mom to be in a child's, even a boy's life at an early stage because mm -hmm. we teach you how to love, how to take care. Because most boys who just raised with their dad from a kid, they're so hardcore, they don't know how to, the sensitive yeah. side. My mom, she was working uh, two jobs and, so, my, and, I, and I would be with my grandma. Oh, so that's who raised you? Yeah. So how do you feel as a kid? Was it like just normal to you or did you feel like, man, why my mom and dad can't be around? Um, it was normal because you know that's what, like everybody, everybody was like, hey, he ain't got no dad over there, or he, he don't he don't have two parent household. Like everybody around me didn't have it, so that was normal. It was normal, and the same for you yeah. too. Yeah, just my mom raised me. Just your mom. Where was your dad? Lie. This 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 thing is smack. Is the, he the one. <laughs> Smack is the one. He the one. Around yeah. the corner. So did you know him? You yeah. knew him. Yes, I did. Did you spend time with him? He never claimed me. Never claimed See, you. See, there no. it is. I told you. Yeah. Did you grow up hating him because of that? As a kid, yeah, but I grew up out of that. You did. I forgive, but I don't forget. You forgave. Yes. How long did it take you to forgive? Because you know, as a kid, you still gonna hate for a while. Twenty seven, and I'm thirty seven now. Wow, what happened? Yeah, Why you forgave? What, what, what? Cause a lot of people out here who are watching this show still hating on on their dad or something like that, wishing they'd die. I've heard it all. Yeah. And I always tell them, you got to let it go because it's going to be passed on to your kids. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You understand what I mean? So yeah. what happened in your life while you figured out, I got to let this go? Because I had a good mother that didn't teach me to hate nobody. You feel me? She always said, that's your daddy no matter what. You feel me? Even though he come get your older brother and don't get you, really? don't hate him. Yeah, but it is mostly due to her and his brother, my uncle, Big D, that raised me. Wow. So he was like my dad. So he came and got your older sibling and didn't get yeah, you? I, yeah, never came and got me. That's crazy. Did he feel like you weren't his? Because you know some men be like, well, he ain't mine. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? I, I guess he did because when the DNA test came back 99.9, so you he did said, do a yeah, he says the white man test. You know, I'm like, whatever. That's a cop out. Wow. Yeah. I'm wow. sorry about that, but you nah, know, it makes good. you a stronger person. For real. You have kids now? No, ma'am. Not yet? Not yet. Do you want? Yeah, eventually, once I get a house, I don't want my kids to grow up like I did. I like you feel that. Me? I'm trying to figure it out now. Nah. Because most men who go through the things that you always try to overcompensate for their kids and be like, I'm not going to be like my daddy. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do yeah, this. You know, you hear I a lot of that. I my kids life. Right. Both man. parents. See, I love that. That's yeah. good. I tell you what, man. Like I said, family is very important. And I think, like my older brother, he never really met his dad. Or when he did, it wasn't no really just connection because he used my dad as his dad. And I think because of that, he's so, look, his kids, they mm -hmm. right there with him. His whole family, he, it makes you stronger in that aspect. You start to look at things. On, I'm not going to let this happen to me the way my father did. Now, my father was there. But the nigga wasn't right a lot of times. A lot of stuff mm -hmm. he did wasn't right. And I rocked with it because I loved him. But I learned later on to love him even more because I felt bad for him because my granddaddy wasn't really a good grandpa. Wasn't really, I, I ain't going to say he wasn't a good dad, granddad, but his son, he killed one of his sons on the back of a truck. Mm. There was some stuff that happened. My dad got shot in the head, you know. All kind of stuff that done mm -hmm. happened to him. And then for him to still be hanging there as a father, and still be there for me, even though he was there. And sometimes he didn't know how to do things. He didn't come to those football games and stuff that I did. But he still was my dad. And you can't really come around me and talk about your dad really in a bad way because he at least got you here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So let that nigga make it because I promise you start looking down the road where he come from, you're going to see why he did what he done. You That's know what true. I'm saying? So you right. feel sorry yeah. for him when you start to see My dad that. told me the same thing before, though. Yeah. He told me my dad never told me he loved me. Mine either. He said, I don't know. He said uh, he didn't know how to be how a father. Yeah, mine either. Mm. So that's the older. You go back. It comes with you age. go so far back, though, and you start to hit slavery and stuff, too. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, people don't want to even act as if that thing affected us. They be trying to roll past it. Like, don't say nothing about it. But we as, pe we as brothers and sisters have to acknowledge that so that we can grow. You know what I'm saying? Genealogy is important, man. But right. that's why I hear them calling this generation a generation to break curses. That's what they call mm -hmm. this generation yeah. because this generation is speaking up so much more about how they feel. You know, before, back in the days, it was like, no, you sucked that up. You a man. What you talking about? 
be tough. Now people are like, no, we need to talk about this. I don't need to pass this hurt on to my children or my children's children because it does pass on whether you believe it or not. Yeah, do. Yeah. Because, you know, you talk about your dad and the only thing I can think of now is your brother. How did you feel towards your brother? Because I can feel, I can figure out that any regular person would be like hating, not hating, I don't want to use that strong word, but disliking your brother because like, why you? Why he picking you up and not me type of thing? But no, I never was that with me and my brother because like I was into lowriders. Okay. And he used to come pick my brother up in the lowrider. My brother was into video games. Mm. So when he used to come get Corey, Corey would be like, I don't want to go. I want to stay in the room and play video games. Mm -hmm. Take Kevin. He like, shame. Come on. Okay. So now I'm in the window crying because I want to go with Corey in the lowrider. Mm -hmm. And Corey don't even like lowriders. <laughs> he want to stay in the back room and play Nintendo 64 Sega Genesis all day. Oh, okay. So we always, and he always came back and whatever he gave him, he always split it with me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You got a great brother. Yeah. That's a real great brother. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so I, want, I definitely want to get into it, you know, um, just the whole, you know, the way you guys changed over y'all formats, you know, and start mm -hmm. doing the other. Um, I do want to ask you, like, when you guys first, uh, when you first linked up with uh, Adam mm -hmm. and you went over there, what was that all about? Like, how did that even happen? Um, it was just no expectations. Like, I ended up, I ended up running into Adam at uh, my guy O3 Greedo's video shoot. Okay, him and Maxo Cream, who's from Houston. Um, I went to the video shoot. Shout out Maxo Cream. Yeah, shout out Maxo. Yeah. How long ago was that? This was like 2018, I believe. Okay, That's hard. 2018. Yeah, and at the time, like you know, I heard his name. My little brother put me on. He was like, this guy is the one that's, you know, he's doing all the interviews with the rappers, and they're blowing up. So everybody in the city wanted an interview. So I ran into him at the video shoot, and I was like, hey, introduce myself. I was like, hey, man, let's do an interview. So he's like, I got you. And I ended up um, doing an interview with him just just as a rapper. Um, we had a great time. It was funny. Like, a lot of great conversation. Like, it's you know, it's still on YouTube right now. Um, yeah, it was dope. And then I guess I left an impression on him. Um, and I want to say maybe six months later, he was like, hey, we want to test out some things and doing all this. And at the time, I'm not thinking of like podcasting. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not thinking like, oh, I want to do podcasting or I want to be this in this space. Like I'm thinking like, okay, I'm a rapper. If it's a situation that can help expand my music and get me more eyes, then I'm down. So I went and I did like this test pilot for some type of content. And then I, they probably didn't hit me back to like three months later, and um, quarantine had happened. So you know, at, at first Adam hit me. He was like, he got a Snapchat show. He was like, he think I'd be good for it. And I was like, I said I'll try it out. Like I ain't tripping. I was like, in my head, I'm like, I'm not gonna do this full time though because to me it takes away from the music side of things. So I was like, I never wanted it to, t to take away from the music side. So. Um, once I started doing the Snapchat stuff, I was like, all right, you know, it's cool. And then quarantine happened. Everything, Everything shut, shut down. down. You ain't got nowhere to go. Ain't no rap mm -hmm. shows. It ain't nothing. So everything shut down. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I just kept going back. It was it was convenient, close to my house, and I just kept doing that. And I just noticed started noticing like different race people coming up to me. Cause before this, like people wouldn't, you know, Mm -hmm. street background and stuff people you know they would be scared to come talk to you yeah they'd be like oh you know later they'll hit you up on, on DM like hey I seen you at the what's the call I'm like man why you say nothing mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that's the type of aura that I was giving out mm -hmm. and I didn't like that yeah so I looked and you knew that did you knew I that I knew that though and cause a lot of like a lot of my older music it's a lot of like street game banging Compton type stuff and yeah I, I'm thinking that, and, and now I can you know honestly say um, I came to a roadblock to where I was like, you know what? Am I putting the right message out there to the youth? Because if I'm sitting here, you know, moving on in life, living, you know, living better and doing things, progressing, and I'm taking care of my kids and I'm doing that, but I'm making street songs. And, you know, sometimes so people, live. yeah, sometimes people will tell me like, oh, man, you make me want to go shoot up something. Yeah. And I'm like, that ain't the type of energy that I want to give across. Like, I'm a genuine good dude. Yeah. I like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I like to uplift people. Yeah. I don't like to, you know, if it's some type of confrontation, 
I always, my grandma always taught me like, hey, let's try to, you know, rectify the situation. If we can't, then we can get to this and yeah. everything else. But for the most part, I started seeing like I had songs like Crip Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like I that. Think you, you did, you, but but early on, you and YG, y'all did some stuff yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Like being from, uh, from, from, from that side. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it was like, okay, you know, at the you know you, you I understand but you grew you got older yeah. too during the process so I think that's some because when a lot of my partners get locked up a lot of time people come home they be like he changed well he was gone for five years or he was gone for four years or if you just growing up and coming into your greatness yeah you're gonna feel like that and there's nothing wrong with transformation man in evolution right so I think that's live bro like and I think that even though you you see what you was going through and you see those people coming to you. That's just God picking at you, saying, mm -hmm. "Man, you moving to the next level, man." That's hard, bro. Yeah, my, and, and my grandmother, she would, you know, like I had I had both sides. My grandmother, she was beautiful angel on earth. Always taught me somebody steal from you. You know, they probably need it more than you do, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, always forgive people. The importance of family, and I didn't get it. I, you know, I, I rebelled against that at a young age, so I didn't like want to hang with my family like that. I was outside in the streets with my homeboys, mm -hmm. and I, I felt like at the time I probably put my friends more above family. And then as I got older, I was like, damn, family is really all that you really have. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm. that nigga can switch up on you, and things can happen. And yeah, man, my grandma she told me that so I I had her heart but you know I'm going outside I gotta adapt yeah because yeah. my homeboys hey we into this we into this we yeah, into that yeah, can't yeah. go over here can't go over there and they didn't understand that mm, mm. but the, the, the thing is man like I said again having that foundation is so mm -hmm. important man and, and and I think that's so live man I, I really like I said I think with you going over there just as much as you said that uh, no jumper basically before Adam 22, like for him, for you, like you say, things changed when you went over there as far as people start coming up to you. I believe that the other side also start coming up to him and it start respecting him because of you. So because of your, of your blackness, to be honest with you, and y'all being so div like people like you, like yeah. you probably never would have spoke to the nigga if it wasn't for him. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. So yeah. that's the way it be. And it's a good, it's a win-win. So it, it is a win to me. That. To me, it's a combo of things though. Correct. Because at one point, yes, he's getting his interviews off. But on the other end, like we don't have no real platform in Los Angeles that yeah. you could just go other than the radio. Yeah. Which like, you're one percent that gets to go to the radio. So you know, in the same sense, yeah, you can say that. But I'm giving, I'm gonna give respect to say like it's a platform. Yeah. That you know, people from our communities, whether right or wrong, for better or for worse, get to go out there and get some exposure. So to me, that was the dope part. About I think it. that's dope too. But yet and still, with you being over there, it brings a whole aura mm -hmm. that where people feel comfortable going over there. I gotta say that. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That that's gonna right. turn it up. Mm -hmm. I'm be honest, and it's gonna turn it up in a way to where did you and and I'm gonna ask this and I'm gonna let you talk because I know you're looking <laughs> at me. Did you did you feel like you was making a difference when you was doing it? Yeah, because you know now people are coming up to me instead of saying, "Hey, you you turn me up when I'm doing this." They're like, "Bro, you bringing you help bring joy to my life." That's hard. You funny. You you know what I'm saying? You, I'm getting I'm getting respected for my personality now. That's hard. So yeah, that was amazing. No, I was just going to go back to when you were talking about, you know, the things that um, your grandmother instilled in mm -hmm. you. And I always, the rappers that are listening, upcoming rappers or, you know, the older rappers, what could you tell them to motivate them? Because you were in that spot that was talking about killing and all this stuff, and now you're somewhere else. You realize that it's not getting them anywhere how can you advise these people who are doing that same thing, who is where you were? Um, just have good people around you. You know, that's real important, especially as young black men. If you don't have a great male role model, you're going to find a bad male role model. And that can, like, deter your whole life and stuff, too. So, I mean, just me personally, I've always seen where I lived and where I came from. I knew it wasn't the end-all, be-all. Wow. Like my mindset was somewhere else and I'm like, okay, I just got to get there. So I always knew I, I, I believe in God. I got faith. I always know God. I'm like, God's going to take me here. And he ain't never made me, you know, go downward. I've always, it's always been like this. Man. It's been a slow grind and I appreciate the slow grind because in the slow grind, I've learned so much more and, you know, it makes me appreciate things today. 
Yeah. Man, that's my boy AD. He yeah. on no, Boss Talk I, 101, yeah, I man. Love it's going I love down, it. baby. No, I love the growth because one thing as a, a mother, you know, you tell these kids um, the thing, you want them to do good. Just mm -hmm. like how you say you ran from that. Mm -hmm. And we don't want you to run. We want you to change and change right now. But I've learned that it works in God's time. So don't be scared to tell these kids and you don't be scared to pass your information on mm -hmm. to these kids. They might not hear you right now, but you heard eventually. Yeah. And wow. you were able to change. You man. know what I mean? Smack, man. Yes. What's up, man? I, 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 listen, man, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. You kind of, I'm looking over there at you because I heard about the Tommy G situation about him hood vlogging. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but then that's a white guy, right? Yeah. Like, and, and this is, is this after y'all leave uh, No Jumper? No, nah, I was still there. He was still there. The blog, okay, yeah. cool. I mean, I'm just trying to make sure you don't want no yeah. problems. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so what was that? Line. Yeah, that's right. What was the, what was the what was the deal with that? Uh, how can I how can I put it in perspective? Basically, like we already had an agreement, so I'm telling him I don't promote gangs. I'm not promoting that. So when we got over there. He asking all these crazy questions that could get people indicted. Wow. So I'm steady like, hey, that's out. That's out. So then when it all was said and done and over with, now you go title it of mm. hanging in the hood. That's like, come on, bro. I don't do that. I don't promote that. I don't support that, bro. That's hard. Like, you trying to get me in jail and put a gang injunction on me or something? Like, then I had my manager hit him up. Tell him, take it down. It's untitled. He didn't want to listen. I'm like, you know what? God got me. I ain't worried about it. But that ain't the message that I want to put out. Yeah, and I get it, man, because you got to understand, man, when you, because you got a whole brand now. People people mm -hmm. don't really look at this the way that they ought to a lot of time because it come to them so fast and they never had to, you, there's no class for this. There's no nothing to tell you how to do this. Right. You just end up in a situation where you have to learn this as you go. So when you get in those situations, you start to be like, hey, man, this, this ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know when somebody's trying to pull a fast one on right. you. You know what I'm saying? So. I definitely commend you for even recognizing that and for, for you to say that and to be a young man like you is, that show where y'all at, man. That's hard, bro. Like Appreciate I said, man, that, that that's the hardest thing when you, I, like I said earlier, being, being you know, what's, what's dope for me, what's gangster for me is taking care of your family. Real and I'm just, I, I'm just with that. Like, I'm with that, so with that because at the end of the day, a lot of our brothers and a lot of our sisters have been misled and misguided and separated and divided. Facts. So we got to find a way to bring that back together. I think that happens with us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, But does that make you very precautious about the people that you actually next time sit down with? Uh, yeah, I just live and learn. So next time, if they ask me anything about anything, no comment. Right. Yeah. No comment. Man, AD, what, 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 when, when I look over there at him as well, I remember about, you know, you gave him the chain, this show, he crying on there or whatever, having tears, smack, tear, smack mm -hmm. showing love because it means something, bro. Like mm -hmm. to have, a, have something to say, I'm a part of something. Yeah. See, see, that's what people don't realize. When I look at gangs and all that stuff, this family or anything grows up into something. And it ain't always bad. People make it, that's the part. People people like to look at the bad before the good, to be honest with you. Facts. So how? what did that mean for, for him to give you that chain? And, and it meant a lot. And him, Big Chief, all that meant a lot to me. Yeah, like, right. I, ain't never, you, I, never, I never got nothing in life. That's hard. You feel me? Like, I got stuff, but not like this. You feel me? Yeah. Like, and the love they showed me since I've been around was like crazy. So for them to do that, and I didn't know nothing about it. I didn't know it was no chains coming. I didn't know nothing. I just went That's to do my job and work. That was it. Wow. When they came through, it was came like, through. like, like, I'm saying, let it out, loved one. I had to let it out. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa. Oh. Wow, this hard, man. So, But how did y'all meet, though? Oh. You two. Me and Eddie in the yeah. streets. In the streets. In okay, the street. how old were y'all? How long ago was that? This is what, maybe 10 years ago? Yeah. Right? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because y'all from two different sides, so that's what I was trying to figure out. Well, I mean, everybody clubs the same places. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah so you, um, yeah, yeah, the Hollywood so clubs, you see, you see, see yeah, you run yeah. to each other. He's just a good dude, just always. Wow. Okay. So, Big well, Chief, explain that to me. Those, yeah. man, those are my brothers right there. Yes. Um, Lifestyle Cannabis Company is the brand. Shout out to MJ, shout out to Chief, the whole squad. Um, yeah, I met these guys. Randomly, my DJ introduced me to him. I'm not the biggest weed smoker. I do it. I do it every once in a while. And with so many people having cannabis brands now, it's like it's it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, and yeah. It's like the, I I used to just be super alcoholic. I'm like, damn, I can get five thousand pounds of weed 
but no one ever wants to give me liquor. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's how much weed is in the city. For so sure. uh, my, my, my friend, he took me to their warehouse and we just had a great conversation. Oh. They were good dudes. And it yeah. was like, you know what? I know he don't smoke like that, but we want to work with him. Mm. And at the time, they had all these artists wanting to do collabs and stuff. And it was just like, man, there's something about this guy. I want to work with them. Mm. And we sat there. We put a plan together. I have my own strand right now. It's called the Uzumaki. All right. People love it. What makes your strand different from anybody else's strand? The, the heart, the love, the care. <laughs> yeah. It smells amazing. And it's a play of... um. Naruto. So Naruto is my favorite anime. Oh, you know, yeah, I know Naruto. Yeah, my kids are into that. So that like that story of Naruto mm -hmm. kind of like it kind of reminded me of myself in yeah. a way. And I was like, it kind of like changed okay. and just having that mindset of like basically never giving up and stuff too. So that's been a big part of my life. And I was like, all right, we're gonna spin off of that, and we made uh, the Uzumaki pack. Oh, yeah. Wow. I like it, man. Like I said, man, you guys, man, amaze me, man, because you really, what people don't realize, wrap it up, put it in a boat, it's just entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. right. And I love it because that's the whole part about the game. When 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 the rappers started to come on the scene, being an older cat and seeing the 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 money that started transferring, I don't care if it's a 360 deal, we'll take it. I don't care what it, we Anything. get it. Nigga, we ain't have nothing. So we taking it. And right. then when we take it, we're going to flip it like we always do. We're going to turn it into something y'all mm -hmm. never could have made it out of. We used to do that back at the outhouse. So I know already what what, what about to happen. Yeah. You give us an inch, we taking miles. Yeah, we taking countries, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that's the whole right. game, man. I just I just love the fact that that you guys got in early because y'all money so much powerful, more powerful than mine because you got more years under you to where you can take that and flip that and learn how to do stuff that's gonna help so many people. I'm just giving it to you the way Boss Talk 101 do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. Go ahead, Bo. So I wanna know T Rail. Yes, the incident. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all got to argue a little bit. But yes, they yeah. got but into they probably, it. But that's the way we do, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happened? Uh, how did that happen? We just ah, uh, how can I put it? Like <laughs> we argue all the time. That's my friend. We argue all the time. Okay. But you feel me? It was certain stuff I was doing with kept his nerves bad. You feel me? And it just got to a point. You feel me? Where his nerves clicked and it, it went like that. But you know, that's my brother though. I love it. I, I would say T Rail is a perfectionist. Yeah. And right. he wants he wants things to be perfect. Right. He wants everything to be the best. And when guests come over, he wants him to be on point. Mm -hmm. If he feel like he's lacking, he gonna yell at him. He gonna yell at everybody around That's like, me. Yeah. That's that sounds like you gotta, me, though. You gotta get this right. Yeah. So, you know, at the time I feel like he looked at him like, oh, you holding the show down right now. Yeah. And it just made him Feel away. And react. Yeah. It was actually my fault, though. Really? <laughs> yeah, I blame yeah. myself. Because I think when he used hugged fault. him and yes. then that, I seen the hug, he like, what this nigga think? He tried to baby this nigga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 babies in his hole? It was, to me, yeah, as I say, it was my fault because I felt like the energy was getting there and Smack is looking at me. I knew that's why you yeah. did that. Because I know him. He, he'll be like, okay, if I can't be myself, then I'll just shut up. And I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to tell him, hey, bro, keep the show going. It ain't nothing. Whatever. So I'm sitting there doing that. And as I see him going back and forth, I'm like, nigga, you good. I grab him. And I see it. turn around like, hey. What and you doing? That's what yeah. ignited yeah. that. Yeah, because, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, we're going to have, that's, that's a part of this. You know, I just... Shout out Money Moses this morning. He wanted to be here. He couldn't be here. And he called me whoop the whoop, wop wop on the phone. And I told her, I say, look, we when we go somewhere, it's just it's a part of team and, and it's a part of of of, of love bro. too. Cause at the end, mm -hmm. what I say, when at the end I say, hey man, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? We'll make it up next time. We'll do something. You ain't gonna else. miss another one. No, nah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, so we'll make it up because because I'll make it up. Like we're gonna we're not giving up on nobody. Ain't nobody going back. We going mm -hmm. forward. You know what I'm saying? When you look like me, it's my responsibility. I am here. I am older than you by 20 years. I can't stoop down and start arguing with you. Like I'm supposed to be better than that. So mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be showing you the way. How can I show you the way if I? Yeah, we gonna get frustrated, but I supposed been them been to a place over the last 20 years where you wasn't even around where that frustration was able to be handled. Mm -hmm. So as an older man, 
I look at it as I got more to do, so I'm going to make it right. But at the end of the day, I'm going to teach you a lesson within it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got to do. So for you and him to even do that, I know it ain't nothing. I know it ain't nothing because y'all brothers, you know. He he on me like my mama said, if I'm on you, it's for a reason. That's right. I'm not going to just be on you just to be on you. So for him to be on me, he want me to do better. He want me to be greater. You feel me? And that's it. Like, we homies since I was a kid. Man. You feel me? He's five years older than me. I grew up with him and his brother. Slept in his houses. All that. You feel me? It just looked crazy on camera to people. But yeah. nah, it ain't. That's But, but you got to understand, man. Um, that's going to happen. It's going to be ups and downs. I'm at the studio all the time telling I'm older and I'm a perfectionist too. So I get that part. So I'm running people out. I'm Mm-hmm. Making people leave because they ain't on point. If you get high, nigga, you can't hold your hold your own, nigga. Don't even get high. You playing? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, nigga, you playing? Yeah. It can't be that good. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we got a show to do. These people done flew in and come mm-hmm. on this show. You better be right on this show. So that happens a lot of time, but on the behind the scenes, or me and her, we may get into it about certain ways that we want little things to happen, but nothing's bigger than our marriage. But still. That's a part of growth. When somebody love you, man, and love what y'all are doing together, yeah. man, that's gonna happen. And y'all, as men, you you step up and change the whole algorithm and say, you know what, man, next week we back at it again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For real. <laughs> so I go. <laughs> so when you were on the show um, with Adam, how much input did y'all have on that show? Whereas the show, how it went, and so forth. Oh, we had full input mm-hmm. on everything. On everything. Yeah, it was. Well, I mean, it was just basically. It's just like, you know, he said earlier, there's no rules to this. There's really no handbook to mm-hmm. it. Some people can give you pointers and, yeah, certain basic things that you know, like try not to talk over each other and certain stuff like that. But for the most part, like a show like how we had, you can't predict that. It's just, you know, pure energy, pure fun. So, and, you know, as long as the views is there, I mean, hey, here, take all the inputs you need. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we have full input on everything. Okay, yeah, you know, and, and I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I got to bring it up. Mm-hmm. When Charleston White was on my show, my people want to <laughs> know about, you know, me and you sitting here today, yeah. we finally got together, but the people want to know, they going to want to know, like, man, they linked up, I remember when they had, they, I was so, I wasn't even mad because I'm older, like I just told you, I think. But in my mind, I'm like, did he just say uh, Boss Talk went on the Black Podcast? I think he said the Black Podcast. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> and I'm like, what I is he a, saying? I'm black. He black. Hey, I had to throw a little shade, though. Because I said, at the time, I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm watching the interviews it's and hard, stuff. It's hard. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they low-key throwing shots at me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, yeah, they low-key throwing shots yeah. at me and shit like that. So I was like, all right, that's cool. That's Man, cool. Yeah, but I was like, the Black Podcast? Oh, okay. But you know what? <laughs> You know what? I just knew, like, like because we look alike. I'm mm-hmm. being honest with you. I'm always thinking, man, I got to meet this dude. I got to. Mm-hmm. Then I was, t- mm-hmm. I kept saying, you know how many people were sending us bad notes about that? They love y'all, bro. Man. Like I got so much bad, didn't I? I got so much e- emails, people <laughs> calling, everything. Like, man, y'all suck. Why y'all go? Why you say that by ED? This, this, I was hearing all that, and yeah, they, the trolling is real. Trolling Adam is real. 22, yeah, and I was like, man, you know. But in my mind, I was like, man, it ain't bigger than that. I, when I meet them, that's when it's going to be real. It ain't real right now because the internet is tricky, man. Right. And they you know? can twist and turn anything Everything. you say yes. into something totally different right. yeah. and magnify it a thousand times. And, you know, I ain't let my wife even be on them episodes when, we, when that was happening. Yeah. I, I, you noticed that, didn't you? It was just me and Money Moses and Charleston. And it was like, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, after that, you know, Charleston and us, we had our little old situation. But that's a part of this game, man. Him and Cam Capone News, him and all of this stuff was happening in real time. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, man, like I say, we all look alike yeah. and we got to figure it out. Right. And it ain't nothing wrong with getting into it as long as you figure it out. Hey, man. This gonna happen. We gotta move forward. So how did you? How did you end up? Cause I know it, it changed your rhythm. Yo, I heard you say, man. I, I heard you say, like, man. I really, I ain't got no problem with this dude, man. Because man, really, you know what I'm saying? My uncle, I think you said your dad or your uncle, somebody yeah, knew yeah, it, yeah. and you were like, man, you know, I ain't really. I could sit down with the dude or whatever, and and I thought that was noble. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Uh, because at the end of the day, you got to be able to get past your differences, man. You know what I'm saying? It can't be something to just just pretty much. I'm gonna get that nigga when I see oh, him. Oh, people was mad that I said it. I, was I that know way. it. You know, listen, they man, was mad, mm-hmm. bro. But I'm a but I'm a person like I don't. If it's something that I want to do, I want to lead by example. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to be no follower. So, yeah. you know, I felt like when I made the statement that I made, it was 100% wrong. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? A hundred percent wrong. Shouldn't have said that. And I can own that as a man. Like it wasn't cool. So the reactions that I got, I deserve those reactions. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, he didn't know me and maybe that's how God wanted it to work. He didn't know me from a can of paint. Mm. And once I said what I said, he, he said, Oh, well, he was going in. He go crazy. And, and I ain't gonna lie. I put him in that seat and I'm the one. I ain't gonna lie. I can't lie. I'm the one that uh, I set it up. I, yeah. I got to be real with you. I seen you say that. Yeah. He did an interview with Cam Capone News. I recorded it. That, that's when he was interviewing there. I said, when you get through, turn around. I say, because we can get on here because AD said he'll set you up. <laughs> <laughs> then I do it. I put it together. I said, we're going to get this nigga. I, in a way, we better figure this out why he want to yeah, set you up. Yeah. You, do you know that nigga? Yeah. That's me. Like, And I knew that I didn't know how hard he was going to go. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't ever know. You can't tell which way he gonna go with it. But at the end of that, I knew it was gonna be something different. I was like, oh, here we go. And, and then what tripped me out, people will try to take it after that and run with it and try to get into the situation. Mm -hmm. I seen all the other uh, people with platforms, they try to, you know, bring him on and talk about it. They jumped off that off of Boss Talk Real 101. Talk, I agree. I agree. And, but at the end of the day, I ain't tripping on that. I just know I did that. But I also knew. I knew he was gonna get Adam too. I knew I knew I knew Adam was gonna get it. Charles can get everybody. He got everybody. I knew Adam was gonna I got it. He got it on me, so I know. And that's the thing too, is that once that situation happened, I'm over there. I'm going to his YouTube looking for what he's talking Something. about and responses. <laughs> and I just end up like, man, this nigga entertaining. Right. I can't, right. I can't right. even cap. Like he's saying the most wildest shit. But I'm like, this nigga is entertaining. entertaining. And and it's crazy too because Smack didn't he end up blocking you? Yeah, you <laughs> on that dude. No. Yeah, cause uh, one day <laughs> and he, hey, that nigga blocked you. And he, and he fuck, hey, he fuck with Charleston heavy. Oh, he messed up though when he when he went across that road. Tell what, what happened? You did. Why he blocked you? Because uh, one day I was leaving the studio and I'm uh, driving. He on live. He was he was talking to somebody and gave a number out and didn't know that he was still on live. <laughs> thought he muted it. So I called over 200 <laughs> times the whole way hour home. Hey, so I'm fucking with him. He like, whoop, whoop, you gay or something's wrong with you, whoop. He like, Charles. <laughs> you were killing it. I swear. So now he, I just, I was just on him. I'm like, man, I like this dude, though. You feel yeah. me? He say the wild stuff. Yeah. But before he get off, he know how to clean it up. Yeah. And like he said, when I get on this camera, I'm a character. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean he a character? So now I'm doing my research. He like, when I disrespect people, I call them by their hood name. That ain't their real name. That, he's like, like basically me. My name S. Mac. He can say F. S. Mac, but he never said F. Kevin Deshaun Hambry. Yeah, who Cassandra raised? Yeah, but that's a, that's a slippery slope, bro. It is I'd a slippery been, slope. I, I'm really telling you right it. now. No, look, that's I'm a you. very slippery look, slope. I'm telling you, that's just a nickname. Yeah. That's a nickname. But, that's but he why just say it the wrong way when he after dead and all that. That's exactly. what makes it crazy. That's what makes you it go feel, real crazy. Really? That's but why Melvin Fun was like, um, you know, he when got he when, they, when he went in about Nipsey right. and about Buntry and all of those yeah. different people that's dead. And he went in, he was like, man, nobody going to disrespect Nipsey Hussle. Took it, Williams. Y'all mm, right, right. remember that episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, so sure. Th this is something that that it's a slippery slope. So you got to know how to how to deal with this because, like I said before, a lot of those people who they only go by that nickname, they only known in the hood That's by that nickname. Legacy. So they, you know, they, it's, it can turn crazy looking. You know, um, we had our altercations. You know what I'm saying? And I never spoke back or never even talked about it because at the end of the day, me and, he never called me or we, me and him never spoke wrong to each other he was doing his internet thing me and my wife i was like you know what i never because i don't talk I, first of all i know you can't never take that back down so if you really watch the episodes you're gonna see that nigga stay in character <laughs> mm -hmm. because i know already this is a legacy for my kids to watch when i'm dead and gone y'all know that right Real talk. so you can't be on here just crazy now and that's why when me making a statement like that i don't want people to see that and be mm -hmm. like oh this is uh, i'm I'm just, you know, being the person that they think I am, a yeah. nigga. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm going on this platform, and that doesn't show no progression. So I get, you know, through all these obstacles in life, and I'm living good, and I'm doing what I'm doing, and I go on camera, and I say some shit like that. That bring me right back down to where I was in the first place. So I had to recognize that. Man. Like, I'm they show you you're a human being. Mm -hmm. We all, right. you know, make mistakes. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, um, and she can attest to this. I didn't even put out the hard stuff. Just think I know it's probably crazy. I got some yeah. way don't I? I yeah. got some stuff that I didn't even put out. I still got tons of footage from Charleston White that 
I've never posted nothing else. After he had it, we left our deal where we left it. I kept on moving and he kept on moving. And at the end of the day, I knew already certain things when you put it out there, you you can't never pull it back. Mm-hmm. Right. And so for Adam 22, you, but more Adam, God, the things that he said. I got it. <laughs> like, whoa. I, it's some stuff that he said I would never put out, man, because I know already uh, it, it looks a certain way on your platform. When you look at, uh, say, uh, you remember when Kanye said what he said, people coming back out apologizing because, you know, you know it looks a certain way. So you don't want to be caught up in a situation where you look a certain way and we don't look the right way to our people, bro. Yeah. So I, I commend you for even coming back and saying, you know what, man, I, I did. I shouldn't have said it. You know what I'm saying? And and it looked like, dang, you up there with a white guy trying to say you're going to set up a black guy. That's bad. That's what it looked like. You do like that, too. And that's what it, and that's the way he played it, too. He played it all the way. Bam. He knocked it out of the oh, park. Oh, that's what, what I was saying. He got me there. <laughs> <laughs> You got a rib shot. What was you saying when you seen these clips coming Man, by? Man, I was like, at first I was getting pissed off because I know there's nothing that I could do about it. Right, and right. Then, then I see him going say cheese. I see him. He I'm was like, going everywhere. Was blowing like, up. I can't say, I, there's nothing that I can do. Because if I if I threaten him, I've already been threatened this man. Yeah. You feel me? That looks bad because I don't lie. Like, people was telling me, it was like, hey, you know, at one, half of the people are like, hey, yeah, go, 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 do Yeah. But the other half is like, come on, man, that's a black man. That's and right. So I'm sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, this is not the brand that I even want to be pushing right now. Me setting up somebody. To, to an older guy. An older guy. Then I say that. Older guy that's got, got really handicaps, all kind of stuff. And I say that to the I world. deal with this. I say that to the world. Wow. There's hundreds of thousands of people watching that, and, and that's what come out of my mouth. So I'm like, ah, that's not cool. Yeah. So you know, once I once I um, I got on the phone with him, I apo- apologized to him about that. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it takes, man. That's big. That's real big, mm-hmm. bro. Like I said, when a, when apology is something that's due, then a real man will, will, will pick up the phone and say, hey, you know what, man, I was wrong. I shouldn't even say that. You ain't say nothing to me, really, for me to even say that to you. So I should. I'm man enough to call you and say, man, you didn't deserve that. And, and that's hard, bro, because at the end of the day, you release him. Unforgiveness is something else. You hold a person in a place when you're unforgiving mm-hmm. them. But when you forgive them, you release them. And that's what's so cold about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, I like it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I think you guys, I, hey, man, listen, man. Y'all y'all got something special up there on the West Coast, man. Y'all boys better, hey, y'all better keep this thing going for oh, us, bro. We, oh, in yeah. the South, baby. Hey, we ain't playing. Nah. Yeah, man, yeah. We just so, looking forward to the future. <laughs> so moving forward to... The day that um, y'all left No Jumper. Oh. I want to fast forward to that. Okay. What built up to y'all leaving? Um, Just, I'm going to honestly say, just a lot of misunderstandings. I think if any, in anything is always communication. Exactly. And it can come from both sides Mm -hmm. of the fence. So, you know, I'm going to take my, um, my part in it. You know what I'm saying? Just communication. Yeah. And if, if I'm feeling a certain type of way, or if he's feeling a certain type of way, we just bottling that stuff, and then it ends up turning into other things. And yeah. and, and when you want to be able to, to 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 like each other when you're working with each other, like coming to do these shows shouldn't feel like a chore, and it shouldn't feel like you know oh, I just got to come and do this for the money real quick. It should just be energy because at one point in time it was great energy. With everybody involved, it was it, it was, we was knocking it out the park, and, and you know I don't know along the lines that energy and that that wanting to be on the platform and willingness, um, it, it kind of went away. When did that started going down? When did- um, I don't, I honestly don't know. I think maybe once we started starting our shows and I stuff like that. that. Yeah, once we started our own shows and and I, and you know I was transparent from the start, like hey, I want to do this, and you know. Uh, Did he motivate y'all to, to go ahead and start your own show? One hundred percent. Well, because the people around him, before I came, you know, they basically he was basically pushing them to do things, and they weren't really doing it. So I was the one that came around. And was like, hey, look, you throwing the, throwing the ball on my court. I'm about to come. Hey, I'm trying Knocking to dunk. Out the I'm trying to dunk every time. Dunk. And also, you know, seeing what's going on. Like, let me start my own as well. Right. You know, 
and that's my legacy. This is your legacy over here. I'm mm -hmm. here to help you. I'm here to, you know, perform and do what I got to do. Let me start this over here now because, you know, I have a difference of opinion. It's a different ways that I want to run business. Can't tell you how to run your business, but, you know, I could build my baby over here. And I ain't never thought that, like, that would be a leading factor or, you know, things would happen, office drama, just everything started whirlwind and super fast and it, it ended up becoming uncontrollable. Did, was it after the, after the, um, was it after you guys started your, 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 your own platform that he talked about the four, you only got four jokes and all that? No, he ain't, I mean, he never told me that. Well, um, it, it, I mean, he just, it, well, how did that come about? How? Um, it was a private conversation between him and another host. What? Lush. Lush. <coughs> Um, yeah, Lush. Um, yeah, because before that, I had a talk with him, and he was just like, oh, you know, me and him, I would call him out. We would get into it. We wasn't seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. And he hit me up. He was like, hey, I think in order for a friendship to remain, um, it's best that I don't have you on a Tuesday show no more. And when he told me that, I was like, I was like, he was like, how you feel about that? And I was just like, hey, it is what it is. Like, it's business. <clears throat> but how did you really feel about it? Because one thing I know about men or human beings, you'll say that, but you really feel a certain way on the inside. Honestly, like, I didn't really feel no way because I'm like, okay, I got my Wednesday show. I got my food show. Oh, and Wednesday's a big show mm -hmm. too, right? It's a big show too. It's a big show. So I was never meant to be a permanent okay. on the Tuesday to, to begin with. So yeah. I always knew from day one, they always told me like, um, you here until we find somebody else to do this stuff too. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really feel no way about it. Only re only time I felt something about it is when I heard that it was like more layers to the situation. So it was like, oh, well, it's the same four jokes. Is this? Is this and is that? And I'm like, damn, I ain't know that. Like, and that, how did you hear about the private conversation that him and Lush had? Because Lush was <laughs> shout out to Lush, man. But what? Lush, Lush is a real honest person. He has to do it for his sobriety. But he went on um, Discord and I guess was telling the Discord people like the conversation him and Adam had. And the Discord people came back and told me. Mm. And that's when I felt defended because I was like, okay, I'm thinking that we homies, we cool, and we're going to continue to do business together. And then I'm hearing like, you don't even like me on the show. So that's kind of like, um, that's kind of like what fucked me up. I was like, oh, you got four jokes. You got this, you this, whatever, whatever was said. And I was like, damn, like, to me, that's kind of harsh. And if you're going to say that shit, say that shit to me. Uh, that's right. But prior to that, you know how sometimes we get hints and we get clues about certain things, and but we turn a blind <coughs> eye to it? Did you ever get any clues, certain things that happened? Oh, yeah. And you're like, you know what? Because a, a lot of, Controversy started to happen, and you know he would tell us like, "I feel like ending all the shows." Oh, that was he was saying it because he was frustrated multiple times. He would like, "I don't know what the future of this going to be. I don't know like if I want to continue to do this. Any of the shows, he was I'm stressed. Gonna, I'm gonna cut them. Like so, when you hearing like, "Oh, you gonna cut the shows?" We like, wait a minute. For some of the hosts, you know that's their livelihood. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. That's all they got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me ask you this, lady. Like, like you guys didn't know how to come in this situation. Uh, you wasn't, you did had never did podcasting like that mm -hmm. before. I seen uh, Joe Budden go through the same thing when he first did his first run, where they all split up. What when you seen when you come into this? I, I don't want to get in your business. Mm -hmm. I, I seen something where he said some about ten or twenty thousand dollars a month or whatever, but. Was he taking care of y'all? Because that, that's a hard thing in this world because you don't even know how these streets are going or how these shows are being paid for or what's going on with it. How would how would you even walk up to that? And I think that's something that he might even had issues with, trying to understand that, right? So was it a thing where he had all that together or was it a thing where y'all was trying to figure that out too? And how many people were he paying? Correct. Like, and who know? wasn't he paying? Nah, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this. like The way I look at it, we was provided an opportunity that we will forever have skills and notoriety for. Um, I didn't go to that platform to get money. Okay. I, I, I came to that platform to further, nope. further my music career, and it ended up turning into something. And then once they gave me a check, I was just happy with the check. That's all. And it was, and, 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 and I'm, and I'm going to be honest, it was a good check. I wasn't like um, not paid what I think that I deserved, or mm -hmm. it is it is what it is. I just wanted to build new situations because what I got from the platform and what I got from just being on there 
that's way more than what the you know I can pay. get. Yeah, the right. knowledge and stuff too. So I wouldn't be starting my show. You know, T. Real wouldn't have started his show. We wouldn't have what we have right now. So you know, I'm always gonna. Thank him for that, for even putting the ball in our court. So, like I said, like I tell people all the time, there's no bad blood. There's ways you can look at it. And honestly, once you start talking about pay and you looking at things like that, then you in it for the wrong reasons anyway. Correct. Because so you, if you love something, you should, we almost say I do it for free. Like we come down whatever. Well, we ain't gonna do, do it for free. No, no, no. When you <laughs> love something, yeah, when you love if something, I love something, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna do it. You're going to pay me, and I know that's coming, because yeah. God ain't going to let you plant no seed and there not be a harvest. But you got to love what you're doing. That's all I'm saying. And I, and I was I was, I was, was paid well. That's hard. Yeah. Okay. But then even when even the pay thing even got out, because normally if you work at any job and when you sign paperwork or whatever, you say you don't discuss your pay, you don't do this, you don't do that. So that's something that shouldn't have even gotten out in the first place. Well, that's a <laughs> no, that's, on, that's on when you got it structured. I'm telling you, I heard him mention ten or 20000 on a, a podcast, I wouldn't have said that. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking, okay. and uh, he says this, and really, to be honest with you, a lot of the shows that he's done since you guys left have been about you guys. That, And that's a part of it, and a lot of stuff y'all done, it just coincided because y'all mm -hmm. was together so many years. And I can say, I look at him, he seems to be professional. I love the way that the, form, the format is, you know, even the new segue that he does. You see me doing mine now. Like, it's something where it's a network. Same way I build mine up, but except for, uh, you know, I, I come from a kind of a business-like background myself, so I'm looking at the building blocks, but at the end of the day, for him to do it, and he come from a place where he knew business too. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like he didn't know business, but how did he conduct his business? And how, you know, talking about yeah, somebody. we don't know him. Yeah, talking about somebody, that happens on the job too. On a regular corporate job, people talk about people behind their back. Yeah, they do. That ain't nothing new. Right. But when I do it, I still got to have a sit down. I should be able to call AD and say, you know what, man? Let's come in off and let's talk about it. Well, that was the thing, too. Cause you see what I'm saying? Even like, I want to say maybe four months before all this happened, um, I don't know if he was reading the comments or he was reading certain stuff. People were like, well, just kept saying, AD's going to leave and this is going to leave. So that was getting thrown in the air. And I had... You had no intention of that I had time. no intentions of that. And he had told me one day, he was like, hey, no matter what goes on in the future, I just want to say, like, you're a great guy. You're a great friend. Um, you know, I hope we continue to do business with each other. And I was like, bro, like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I told him straight right there. I said, listen, as long as I'm not di feel disrespected, I'll be right here with you till the wheels fall off. Yeah. Because at the time, you know, the other stuff that I was doing was was making me way more money way more than money. <clears throat> I was getting paid. Okay. So, but I'm not looking at that. Like, I didn't. You were still there. Yeah. And I didn't ask for nothing else, like, more. Right. I didn't, you know, I'm like, look. I wouldn't be here having this other stuff if it wasn't for you providing that for me. So I'm not about to, you know, gain this and get big and be like, oh, I'll see you later. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to rock with the people and I'm going to rock with the person who put me in the game. And like I said, as long as I'm not disrespected or I feel like unwanted or anything like that, then I'm going to be here. And the minute that I felt any type of disrespect, that's when I said, you know what, I'm about to walk away. Mm. Man, I, like I said, I, I just, I know already it's a blessing because y'all was over there. You got your, you, it, now you got your new platform. Big Man Worldwide. Listen, man, yeah. I, that thing live, I'm seeing the, the materials like this. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? I see, I'm like, okay, this is different. Because different is always good. Right. Better when it's the younger dudes doing it because you know already everybody else got to rock with it. You know what but I'm but saying? But where the name came from? It's a, it's a play on a back on fig which is T-Rail and Smack and Heather, and then you got Community, which is me and Pun, and then you have Duno's World. Duno's so, World. So, yeah, shout out to our brother Duno, man. Got Brought, them Brought them all together. Brought them all That's together. Brought them all together. That's hard. T-Rail supposed to been on my show when I went to L.A., but it was something. Somebody reached out to him. We supposed to lock it in, but it didn't happen. I was dang sure trying to get him on the show. He'll do you it. and him. I know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't really know because... I, I know the energy. I, I, mm -hmm. I could see it. I'm like, okay, yeah, I could get him on the show when I go out there. I'm going to get these old niggas, but I'm going to get this nigga right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So with starting your sh your new show like that, what is it? Because nobody always, when you start a show, you're like, oh, I'm going to make mine different from everybody else. I'm going to make it stand out. What do you do that's different from ev everybody else? Um, we didn't even want to change our format. I feel like what, what, we, what we did on our show at the end of the day was – 
it's not necessarily topic based, but it's just the energy and the camaraderie between us. You know, we playing off of each other and just doing that. And you know, it's 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 more than just a show because we're building our own network. We're gonna pick our people. We're gonna put our ideas out there, and we're gonna you know take things further like that. We know we know what we have to do. We got the tools. We have the knowledge of it, and yeah, we we know what to do. Mm. Wow, I'm 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 gonna be real with you. I I seen the house phone and 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 uh. Um, it, it, I you know I tripped out off his name. Shout out to House. Yeah, Look, I did too. Listen, no, no, no. He helped me. I'm. Yeah. I got a girl on my 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 show now. Name? What's her name? <laughs> Reality TV. Reality wow, TV. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. That nigga helped me. Nigga, he gave me the game. I'm like, okay, okay. I see the move. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so House Phone. I, I remember that episode when he got up and threw. You know, you be mm-hmm. thinking a lot of this stuff. Is this stage? But I knew that wasn't stage. That wasn't stage. I knew that was something different mm-hmm. when I real. seen that. When you watch this stuff and you create this stuff, you know when something's like. That's that's the real deal right there. What uh and and you you was there and and I know he ain't here to speak for himself. And shout out to House Phone. Look, man, I'm cool with you. I want to get you on the show, yeah, even yeah. though <laughs> even though you didn't know who I was. I remember that day you was one of the main ones that said, "I live from Texas." It's the Black Podcast. Yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> what the hell? Texas? Who are them guys? Oh, so y'all started it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did though. But at any any rate, House Phone that day, I knew it was an episode that he didn't agree with the guest that was on there or whatever. And how did, did how did first of all how did House Phone end up coming? Was it through you that he even came on the show? No, House Phone was there before I was there. Okay, so d- just break it down to they me. They had a they had a they he probably was there what. Two, three years before I really? came. Really? Yeah. I thought you, I'm like, hey, I, I need them took all them niggas over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, House, House Phone was there from the start. Wow. Yeah. And, he, and, and he got mad. He got upset. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. That's big if he start, started with him. Yeah. I didn't realize that, man. They started with him. Wow. That's crazy. The, the show that we was on actually was the House Phone and Cam Girl show before it became the No Jumper show. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy because that meant more. That meant way more, actually, because of way more than what we going through. Correct, right? because that, that's like kind of like me and Money Moses. My he's I, I, when I started, I brought him with me. We we put the TVs up together. We went bought the mics together. Like I took him with me, you know, and uh, that's why it's detrimental. But we did a lot of stuff before the podcast. But I mean, that's crazy. How, how what did you think when you seen them get into it like that? Um, they was always getting into it. It was the same type. It was it was really the same type of situation. Where like I don't think that them two liked each other too much, and then started showing on camera, and they was frustrated, and they was irritated with each other, and then you know, it 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 reaches boiling point a long time ago. Wow, yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, I, y'all don't ever cut nothing out of any of y'all stuff. No, you show I be cutting everything. stuff. See, I cut. It's live. You can't cut it. Sure yeah, do. Y'all use true. switches and all yeah. that. So I don't do that. That's a no no right there. Because I, I, it's certain things that come out. Like I said again, when I see things, this culture means a lot to me. Certain things I don't think should be put out. When I see certain people's shows and they put certain things out that could get somebody even killed, bro, that stuff should never come out if you brothers that look like each other. I don't care who get mad about that. That's the way I feel. All that trying to get cloud or trying to act like you bad, like I said, what's gangster is taking care of your family. Real talk. Mm-hmm. So I don't even care nothing about that. I think we should be looking at our, we already messed up enough, guys. Right. We in the news more, we beat everybody that being in the news. We beat everybody at killing. We already beat everybody at that. So for us to be sitting behind that's cameras. that's something to be proud? That's, that's to what be I'm proud telling of. you. So Ain't nothing to be proud for of. us to be sitting know. behind cameras and doing this now and know we can control the narrative. Mm-hmm. Nah, we're not doing that. So that's why a lot of time I think even Vlad and and No Jumper get flack because people looking at it and like, are they exploiting our people? Because at the end of the day, could we have stopped this from happening if we tried? We not know better either because our own people do the same shit. Exactly. Everybody right now, like the integrity of things, everybody wants the clicks. It's out to do. Everybody wants that traffic. Everybody wants the money. And, you know, to me, it's, it's any color. If, if, if you know that you're doing wrong or you're being a detriment to any culture or any type of people, you exploit anything, then you're just as guilty. You can't look at the white man and say, oh, y'all wrong because y'all white if you're doing the same exact if thing. If you're doing the same thing. We got to practice what we're preaching. Correct. So if we sit there and clean our own backyard up, then we can sit there and get on the other people and say, hey, we ain't doing this. Y'all shouldn't do this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we can't sit there. Come on. We call them the kettle black. We can't. Definitely call them the kettle black. Because a lot of people, it's all about the money. 
because that's all that clicks and views Sometimes equate to is the money. The money. They, do, they want the clout. The clout. Mm. They I, want that traffic. They want people to know them. They want to, pe- the, the, the crave for acceptance is at an all time high. It's at an all time But that clout high. only lasts for a minute because then, yes, that moment, this happens, but something else happened and knock you off that throne. It's you like have to keep high, trying though. to come back with something. It's, it's like a high. Everybody wants it. They want, oh, oof, oof. Yeah. They want to keep yeah. going back. No, no, you exactly right. And I'm going to tell you something, man. Mm. You guys, like I said, I, I, I get it, y'all, but y'all, I still say accountability is real. Accountability is everything. You cannot put out every single thing. The thing that happened when you and Tira, and he say, cut the camera. Somebody say, cut the camera, cut that. That don't need to be out there. You better cut the damn cameras off because you, you got people, you got kids watching you, bro. You got little kids who look mm-hmm. up to you. You, I know you done had because I done, I done had it happen to me where people look at you as somebody, bro. Where a, a man will stop his whole family and say, I watch your show every day, man. Yep. Can you take a picture with me? And he got his whole family with him mm-hmm. and he's telling his wife, hey, I, this this the one I watch every day. I know I see him every day on the TV. Uh, okay, my daughter sitting there. Remember I told you, mm-hmm. he stopped his whole family while they out want to just take a picture with you right. because they want to know, hey, man, he like he is on the show. So, if you like you out on the show, it should be something that permeates and help our people. For me, that, I'm just telling you, that's how I'm looking at it. So if you're putting stuff out there to try to put our people in a grade, come on, man, what you doing? You gonna get, you gonna get that energy and you that, blood, get that, same energy that blood back. gonna be on your hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that blood gonna be on your hand. Indirectly, but that blood is gonna be on your hand. Man, so tell me, man, like 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 the music. Let's talk about the mm-hmm. music a little bit. Like like where where's the music at right? Like what's the hot thing in LA outside of yourself that's popping right now? Who's the next artist to pop? I'm gonna I'm give I'm a, I always I always do this. I get props to my boys all summer, man. Okay. He's running it up, he's doing his thing right now. Okay. Like, like and, and and embodying to me what a West Coast artist should be. What sticks out the most about him, about mm-hmm. you know, for you? Um, it's, it's just nostalgic. Okay. Like, when I listen to him, I feel like, it's like, damn, that, that feeling of just having that West Coast aura, we really haven't had that in a long time. So wow. there's a younger guy that's coming up right now. I like that. I like and, that. And for somebody like me who know nothing about any of this sort of stuff, mm-hmm. um, what is that West Coast aura that you're talking about? Describe that to um, me. Just, just a lot of pride and representation from where we come from. You know, like, a lot of times, like, the Brooklyn drill scene has been, like, taken out of Chicago, and they be having their identities. And I feel like for the longest, other than the OGs, the West Coast hasn't had, like, a, a new uh, wave or a new face that's uh, global or worldwide. And at one point in time, we were, like, the biggest in music. We were the biggest when it came down to the entertainment. And, you know, now I feel like guys like Zoe Sama and Blue Bluffs can and... Uh, Ralphie the Plug. Um, there's a it's a gang of artists. Ruchi. There's a gang of artists that are just holding it down and keeping that flag lit for us. Wow. I I I, I just I, I I really agree with you. The the the, the music is so detrimental. Mm-hmm. But but now being independent and doing this thing the way we're doing, do you feel like I mean uh, uh, what is a million streams is four thousand dollars? Yeah, it's, it's come not, on, man. So what what yeah. are we doing? You know, like what the hell are we doing? How are we going to make an ROI out of this? Mm-hmm. What the hell are we doing here? Right. We're trying to figure this out. Uh, yeah, the podcast is making money. Uh, 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 Joe Button figured it out. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like now, how how these rappers, everybody want to be rappers. Really, they got to shift and say, we want to be podcasters now. Well, the thing is, You're right. anything that gets you to the next <laughs> level, because I feel like all the great rappers, like, let's be real. You're not about to have a... Everybody not about to have a 10, 20, 30 year career. Correct. You supposed to get in the game and then you go somewhere else and you figure that out. Wow. You just use that as a as a, a use that as a vehicle to get you to the next level. Mm-hmm. And you know, things are gonna come along the way that you may not even knew that you was liking. Some people now they, they come out with a hit and they be like, damn, I like songwriting more than I like doing this other stuff. They become super big songwriters. They, you know, you got people like David Banner who write yeah. jingles and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's all type of opportunities. And then you got some people who get in this, use their connections, they get in movies, and now they movie stars. So you just use this as a vehicle to get to the next level. Man, I'm, I, so I'm, you got to talk about Nipsey. I met Nipsey at the uh, at awesome. the Palms Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, we was at the counter, and I said, nigga, you ain't working. <laughs> you are not working like you used to. And he told me, he was like, man, you're going to see, you know, me and him by ourself, you know, like, that's how I roll. Like, yeah, okay, we going to see. You know, I'm talking that talk. You know what I'm saying? I love your music, nigga, but where you at? Mm-hmm. And uh, 
he came on with it, you know. Shout out to uh, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, one of the ones from Texas that basically did that blue lace. Y'all know about Mr. Lee? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mr. Lee did blue laces, the, the beat. He the one do the beat. They, they think of the beat behind blue laces. Uh, all of them, that, that's Mr. Lee. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, that for, for Nipsey. So, at the end of the day, um, Nipsey killed the game, showed us entrepreneurship, had his strength. You know, had his had his, his 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 marijuana and all that stuff going. Like, what was it like for you when Nipsey passed and, and the way it happened? Mm. Got I got to bring that up because I love I I, I love Nipsey, bro. That's what, that was the whole game. Like, I loved what he what he represented as far as being able to change, come back to his neighborhood. After I met him at that uh, uh, Palms, mm-hmm. I went we went to his store. I see Black Sam. What before all that? I didn't go after he had passed. I was there before. Way before. Way before. With him. Try, well, with them. With the family. My yeah, family. Black if you ever come, when you come to Dallas, you'll see we got a store where our kids grew up and our store working. That's what connected us. Over eighteen years now. Yeah, Dang, our store been around the whole time. So at the end of the day, when I seen him, my brother was like, "You got to go see Nipsey." I was like, well, I don't see that nigga fuck. Well, he got this kid with him. They doing apps and they doing stuff mm-hmm. in the store. And you can pull up to the store and this. And I said, oh, I'll go out and check that nigga out. And I remember I went and bought a hat and some stuff for mm-hmm. my brother. Then we went back. We started going back because I enjoyed it. And that's the way you're supposed to be as an entrepreneur. You try to, oh, okay, Support I'm going to go link with that. Yeah, we're going to link with that people that look like us. When Tiger had his place, I was going mm-hmm. over there too. Uh, I just always was supported and respected our people. So for you. Let's talk about it. Like, like, how was it that day, and what was the energy like? Man, I was in Lake Havasu. I okay, about, I was about to have a good time, and you know, just just Nipsey for us on the West Coast, man. He was just super motivation. He really, really like put entrepreneurship on a pedestal in our community, which people that look like us didn't think it was possible. You know, we all we knew was okay. You want to be a rapper. You're going to get a record deal, and that's how you got to get on the radio, and you do this and did that. And he really, you know, put action into what he was talking about. He was buying up his blocks. He was, you know, putting stores and putting, putting like you said, putting programs in the community for the people for where, where he grew up at. That's dope. And that made people sit there and say, hey, you know what? I want to sit there and do that for, the, you know, the kids in Compton. I want to sit there and do that for the kids in Long Beach. We want to sit there and do that. And he motivated everybody. To, to you know get on a real hustle run a marathon and do what they had to do and uh, I remember I was in Lake Havasu mm-hmm. and once it happened man just the energy of everybody this it, it just it just dropped and we because we couldn't believe it now we're used to like you know um you know shootings and gang stuff happening but it, it, it was more messed up because of he didn't have to he didn't have to, you know, put a store in his neighborhood. That's right. He didn't have to build programs from where he grew up at. Most people, they get money and they get far away from everybody. And he went and he chose to put that stuff right there and stay with his community and try to keep it together. And unfortunately, you know, that same situation just just happened and, and, and took his life away. Like I know, I wish I, I wish that he would have still been here because I, I knew about a lot of the changes that he was trying to implement that didn't get done because of his passing. So, you know, I wish he was still here. But then when I looked at what had happened and where it happened, I, that's the part that really got to me. I was like, how can, like, you would think that you'd feel safer with your people. You know what I mean? That's right there in, by, in front of his store. Like, mm-hmm. And it happened there. What message did that send? Wow. I mean, where we come from, we used to seeing stuff like that. Really? That's yeah, crazy. Like homies on homies. Ain't that crazy? And situations. Yeah. We used we used to that. That's normal. Like really. Yeah. Where we come from is crazy. It's normal. So you know, it's turned on your own like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of times too, and I'm not gonna say in, in that case, that situation, right? in that situation, but there's a lot of guys, man. They don't want to go beef with enemies. They rather like, you know what? I'm scared of them guys. I'm about to go do something to my homeboy. Because I know, you, yeah. I know yeah. you. I don't I'm not afraid of you. Yeah. Wow. I'm I, you know, I mm. I'm gonna be honest with you, I wanna ask that same question to you because you you there too as well. As far as like uh, about Nipsey, like where were you at that day and, and how did it affect you or how did you feel about Nipsey? Back to me, like it's like Nipsey he like my hood and Nipsey hood is right around the corner from each other. Okay. So I just literally happened to pull up to mom's house one day. You feel me? I'm sitting in the car and I got on Instagram. At this time, 
I like I got a gang of followers, but I wasn't popping on Instagram like that. When I pressed live, I had like five hundred people in there. Like, what the hell going on? All I see is R.P. Nipsey, R.P. Nipsey. So I'm like, what they talking about? So I got off of that. Now I hear the police is boom, boom, boom. They flying, they flying, leaving up out of my section to go to Slauson. Boom, 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 boom. We got scanners on the phone. I tell the homie, I hit the scanner. Let me see what's going on. And next thing you know, you hit it. They like slossing, woo, woo, and Crenshaw. Somebody shot, woo, woo, woo. And then that's when we started doing research and found out. But that that touched me and hit me because he a good dude. You feel me? Even though he's from the opposite side where I'm from, and we don't our hoods don't get along. Really? I really know him like in real life. I met him a few times and everything. Like he's a good, genuine dude. So that touched me. Like man, that's crazy. Y'all it's scary, size, boy. It's y'all, scary. I don't like y'all. This side don't like this that side. side They'd be side. right there, don't it? Yeah, I'm talking about right there. He's, he's no. literally right a few blocks from my like. I was literally. I interviewed ODM Slim. ODM Slim. Mm-hmm. He was he he was like yeah he was trying to explain it to me. I was confused hell. Like really, I was over there. I didn't know he like it's it's uh, this block that block and this. I'm like God, y'all and right by each other. Yeah, yeah, really, right. like, really, where you grow up at, like you is you you're there already, and then you taking on problems that. It happened before before you was even born. Right. Damn. Shit that you don't even know about. Yeah. Wow. So you have to be in, like, if you're born on this street and this street is this certain gang or whatever, when you're born, do you have to be a part no, of that? No, you don't have to be a part of it. But the thing is, is like, you know, your childhood friends who you go outside with and play basketball with and do things, you know, they they may join. And you're like, well, these are my friends. I want to be with my friends. Right. We got to ride because you look at it like family. Yeah. It's like, man, I grew up with you my whole life. So yeah. I don't want to see nobody harm you. Yeah. You hurt my friend. I'm going to hurt you. And that keeps going like that, too. So, you know. But then when that happens and police is looking, they always say, you know, show me who you're around. I can tell you who you are. So mm-hmm. when police see you, they're thinking that, oh, you are part of that gang. Even although you're not so-called a part of that, that's your homie. And, and when, How does that work? With- and, and when you're growing up, too, just being a young black man, living in, you know, impoverished neighborhoods, they're, they're going to judge you like you are anyway. Wow. So it really... It tells, a, it tells a young guy, like, hey, I might as well if they're going to treat me like this anyway. Like, you know, even just, like, walking to the store. You can't be like, oh, I don't gang bang and people leave you alone. They probably fuck with you even more. Dang. Mm-hmm. Hey, D, but see, when I see y'all show, like, Five Five Crip, mm-hmm. Crip Mac come over there, is is that your homeboy or do you even, you don't rock with him? That's no, I don't got no size. problem with him. Opposite side. I, I don't speak. Like, I mean, and y'all not, y'all not, y'all would don't, y'all don't, y'all don't mix. Well, no, I mean, that's, that's, how do you come to, the, how does he be at No Jumper like that and y'all all don't even rock? That happened before Smack even came and that happened. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. T-Rail was there and, and, you know, it was a lot of, it was, it's, 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 it's rock. You see where I'm coming from, no, right? Like, how the hell from. y'all doing these shows? But, you know, like, when you're looking at it as business, the streets don't determine the business. And that's okay. how we looked at it. So different people, you could be opposing to me or where I come from. You know, I've, I've told Adam back in the past, I'm like, look, go interview. You can go interview this guy. I ain't got no problem with it. Or if it's somebody that's, you know, unless I got like a real personal issue with the person and you consider, you know, me a colleague and a friend, then it's a different story. But if he's from the other side and, you know, you want to interview him, interview him. This is business. We shouldn't be sitting here putting gang politics in, in, in the know, business. In business. I agree with what you say, but I understand that. But then I've heard people say, um, but although I acted a certain way around this person, but I know that my community don't deal with that person at the end of the day, when this person left, I ended up getting DP because I didn't handle him when I was around him. How does that work? Well, that's whatever you put yourself into. You know, just because somebody could come on the platform, it's not our platform. You know, and if you're going to sit now, it's different if you sit in the interview. Yeah. And then you don't conduct yourself the right way. Then yeah, okay. they're going to they gonna come get you. Yeah. They're going to come get you afterwards. But, you know, that's that's really what it is. Wow. I mean, I, like I said, I, I just know that, you know. Uh, I just seen, uh, like I say, Crib Mac would come there a lot. Like, I don't know, would you still interview a Crib Mac? Crib Mac, man, Crib Mac's a good guy. Like, we're not tripping off of uh, anybody. But that politics ain't got nothing to do with me where I come from. I'm from Compton. They from South Central. Okay. Like, yeah, that's different, a whole, different world. That's a whole different world. And and, and I said it because I talked to him like a couple of days ago, two days, or was it yesterday? 
They call me. They mm-hmm. everybody call you when you got these podcasts too. We all I just try to figure out ways to help people, whoever in it. If you go if something happened to you, you go like, why the hell that nigga E trying to call me and stuff? Because I'm gonna reach mm-hmm. out. Because right. that's what right. real ones do. Right. Like if something happened bad to anybody, she know how I'm gonna do it. Like you anybody. Something I'm, don't have to happen, you still call and check I call them anyway, anyway, but I'm just saying if something happened, nigga, I'm I'm you really call, gonna call. Because like, sure. right. I'm trying to make sure these folks is not mm-hmm. getting taken advantage of. Somebody can I help? What can I do? Cause that's when you want need you. When somebody down and out or somebody hurt, you gotta you gotta try to lock in with them, man. So I think that's the part where I think that that's something that we as black people we do that too. We care so much about people. People don't talk about that enough. You know what I'm saying? Like we right. care. We got we'll we'll do something too, you know. Yeah, we but care. We, but we care. Like we care too damn much. Definitely. We'll try to help people when we eat no damn well. Mm-hmm. That person ain't feel like do nothing to help us. We'll try our best to help a man. So I mean if you could go all over, go back and do it all over again, what would you do different? I'm going on, uh, and we're about to wrap this up. Going on like uh, no jumper. What would you do different? Would you do everything the same? Um, I would. I would say that I would look at things more as a business relationship more than a fr- less than a friendship. Okay. So yeah, I, you know, I think that that's probably like my biggest mistake is thinking everybody was my friends and we was cool, you know, like that. So. Wow, and and less personal, more business. That's very personal. I watch. But that's the, hard to keep that way, though, especially yeah. when you've been around somebody for a while. And I love people. No, you. I fuck with and you. Stuff. I fuck with you. So right. oh, the, I'm gonna go to way. the ends of the world for you. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm the same way, AD. Yeah, when mm-hmm. you're real, you're real. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you definitely will go the, the whole extra mile. You mm-hmm. ain't for the slow down and doing nothing, man. What top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Top three artists of all time. Um, any, any, I'm going, I'm any genre, next. any That's genre, any genre, Ooh, Mike, Michael Jackson number oh, one. Oh, stop, okay. stop. Cause Michael always, Jackson number always. one. Yeah, but they, you know, I ain't gonna say it today. Always, <laughs> be quiet. Don't yeah, say Chris that. Chris Brown, you know, it's He's a lot of people. It's a lot of a lot of people say a lot of different things out there about who Mike was, He's not who better, Tupac was, all this stuff. You hear a lot of rumors now because these new kids mm-hmm. on the block. But you say Mike is your number one. Mike is number one. Number two would probably be. Gotta gotta make this right. You could you could put Tupac in there. Tupac could probably be number two. That's the usual number three. Three. Matter of fact, no. I'm gonna put <laughs> two gonna be Lauren Hill. Hey. Three gonna be Tupac. That's okay. hard. That's a hard top yeah. three. Okay, I like you a little bit more. Can you put Lauren Hill number two? All right, let's go with it, Smack. Tupac, Easy Biggie. Easy. I like that. What's up with Easy? Shout out to Easy. Shout out to Easy. Well, why Easy? Cause he raw hard man like i grew up listening to him like he cold and i went to school with his sons and daughters wow that's hard what's the what's the tde top dog entertainment what's up with that i mean you over there with them boys yeah i've been with them for like down eight years man yeah. i love what they do too man that's hard bro yeah hey that that says something right there like, <laughs> you rock with them too i'm pretty sure oh, that's, your hood. that's your hood that's your right they're my, they're, my, they're my people over like there. kendrick them over there right kendrick my guy man yeah, he been bro that's that's the homie he been on um, day one how did you and and, and I ain't gonna ask you about Kendrick, but I'm asking about since Joe Budden. How, how much of it, as far as when you started this, did you reach out to him or anybody to say, I how, to, "What uh, can I do to make my platform <laughs> bigger than ever, bigger than like that?" Because you don't do nothing to lose. I talked to Joe Budden, but not about stuff like that. Okay, yeah, okay. It, was, it was some other shit though. Nah, but honestly, like, I feel like what we do, like. Is, is what we do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so different too. Yeah. Each person is different. And I love you, they show too. Yeah, and once you get and once you get like outside input too much, it kind of fucks it up. It does. Yeah, you can't do boss talk one on one. Yeah, you can't. do I'm it. being real, and I can't. I can't do your shows. It's, Not, it's, neither one of them, because you got a few, don't you? Yeah, and it's and it's and it's all the moving parts, like you know, and like. With T Rail, like he's like to me, he's the anchor. You know what I'm saying? He's making sure this shit's gonna flow right. It's gonna go good. I'm gonna do my thing. Smack gonna do his thing. Duno gonna do his thing. We just make that shit shake. Like, how many is. of your audiences are um, females? Like the small your, your percentage. Watchers. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I hate it. I hate it though because it's always I always like that. I'm well, looking at our analytics and I'm like. It's, it's mostly, growing though, honestly, it's growing. Men. But it's yes, mostly, mostly men. I'm like, by ninety percent, they watching the hell out boss talk. Like, I love why? it. Yeah, like, I love I it. Need, I need my, my yeah, ladies need to stand up. And that's that's another reason why I, 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 when we started back on Fig, I wanted Heather to be in there, like yeah. bring the female. You wanted a female? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, wanted, I wanted her perspective. You feel me? Wow. But, but I have. I have. I, what's the craziest show that you've ever seen happen on No Jumper? 
I mean, crazy episode. Episode. Yeah. Every day was crazy because you. But the crazy, there has to be one that stands out that was crazier than. It was wild other. over there. Every it week. was wild every week. It was shit. The craziest probably when Almighty punched on Kelpie. <laughs> That's oh, that was quick too, wasn't it? That was different. Yeah, that was way different. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. I said that ain't and fake. unexpected. <laughs> huh? Unexpected, it, like it you didn't see unexpected. it coming. That was that wasn't scripted. That was unexpected. Wow. And, and I mean, not, honestly, nothing over there was unexpected. Though. Cause you well, stopped a lot of fights yourself. Yeah, and you was in a couple of stuff. Yeah, but that's one thing that I can say is that we had too much free reign. Yeah. <laughs> Say, man, I appreciate y'all, man, for oh, coming man. on the show, man. Anytime, man. Listen, man, when I pull up in LA, this next time it's going to be different. I come every six months. I'm come always on. there. Come pop up. I, 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 we probably come back before the end because mm -hmm. people be calling us to do interviews. Mm -hmm. I be like, nigga, I got to get out to LA. They got that heat out there. Sure. Right, right man. interview pop up, we going to be there. We will Let's pull up, it. nigga. Yeah. Like we yeah. pulled up today, man. So what was it like being on Boss Talk 101? I got to ask y'all. This was dope. It was dope. Because I've been Was it different? Super different. You been watching it? Yeah, I've been. You one of the realest niggas in the I world. You want to tell you why? Cause most niggas don't even want to give people they they respect and honor, man. Hey, hey, shout out Thank to Charles, and I found out. Do you for yeah, real? feel me? Mm -hmm. like every platform he was going on, I looked and I was I'm subscribed to But mine to was the everybody. hardest though. When you yeah. seen him on mine, nah, you said sure. that nigga hard. Right? You can you conduct yourself the right way, yeah. man. I'm yeah, trying. I like your Thank spirit. You. Your son. Thanks, man. I'm trying. I got my wife beside me. I, I feel like me, I can't make beat, it, nigga. To me, that make it even better. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> Way that. better. That. So, so uh, uh, did you think when you came on the show, did, is this what you expected? Yeah. I knew what I, we knew we was getting into. Yeah? Yeah. I know, yeah. like, you're not really a messy person. You not like giving game. Yeah, I'm trying you know to talk what I mean? and talk. And then just talking to you just on the phone, I'm like, man, he a good dude, man. <laughs> hey, what I tell you when we on the couch? He a good dude. What I tell you on the couch, I'm like, bro, I know through him, dude. Oh, Charles, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm subscribed to him. And now I'm here so in the studio. <laughs> like, that's crazy. So you didn't know that before y'all was coming or you no, always I, thought about it? When he told me that we was coming to do the podcast, yeah, you know. I'm like, bro, like, I knew him through Charleston. Yeah, like, the Charleston. I fuck with Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, a lot of people watch that dude on our car. We got him early. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew when I got him, I even talked to my brother before. I was like, I talked about him. He don't never be on those shows, but I talked to him a lot. I was like, man, should I interview this dude, man? I, he was like, man, go ahead. And then I called my uncle. I'm like, man, I'm going to do it. So I called I called him up, called a couple of times. And yeah, the number was up there too. Like, I ain't doing it for this. I'm, doing it. I'm like, nigga, what? Man, I ain't paying that. Then we, we talked and talked until he finally came by. And when he did, just like y'all, like you meet somebody, it's like, man, like, man, I rock with him. He come oh, back man. like three, four days in a row. Yep. That nigga just kept coming back. I was like, this nigga, I got I to gotta go back to work, nigga. How far is he from y'all, from here? From Probably about an hour. Mm -hmm. And he was coming every time. Like, when we open up, he'll call me. Yeah, and then huh. I start helping the kids. You, right. Did y'all see those episodes? Yeah. I, was, I, was I, was giving the kids, I was giving the kids the clothes out of the store when they would get out of juvenile. Yeah. And he was bringing them because yeah. he would go talk to them. And I thought that was dope. So we yeah. really... Even though we had our little whatever, because uh, I never said nothing bad about Charleston the whole time, because that's not my character. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what we did for those kids and what we did for the things that really meant something, man, you can't beat that with a bat. And I tell people that. I used to tell Melvin Farmer that. Like, man, we did do some stuff together. I can't yeah. just sit there and lie. Some great, like, some great dude, stuff We did for some the stuff children. that the kids will never forget, right? And some of those kids got shot afterwards and all kind of stuff. So we definitely... Uh, we did what we did, and I think that was the reason we came together. So that's 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 the one hundred part, man. So I, what you you was cool with boss talk before? So we good? Like when I come to LA, <laughs> I'm checking in. I'm gonna talk about this check in thing because I'm checking in with you. Am I gonna now be okay? Like, checking in to me means like just come to LA and link with somebody that's gonna show you right and tell you where to, you can go, where not to go, where it's dangerous at, where it's the okay, red zone at. That makes where sense. At. Not to exploit that, me. Nah, I'm no, like, you know what they, that, that, <laughs> we, don't do that. we don't do that. We my do tap that. in, if I tell any of my good people, hey, come to LA and tap in with me, I'm gonna let you know, boss talk. What you trying to do that? I wanna go eat over here. Uh, you might don't wanna go there. You might that's wanna like go over there. That's like if we come to Dallas, we like, I'm gonna tell you where to go. Where should we go? Nah, man, don't go over there. You don't go over there. Don't stop there. Go do this. I'll take you to go But we're not gonna tell you not to go here because some Something might happen to you. It's gonna tell you not to go over here because the food ain't good. That too. It's a different. I want to check in, make sure the food's good. All right. Yeah. Man, and then when I come back, I got, I got to take them out to eat. Y'all got, we got to go out yep. to eat and Let's hang do out, man. You I, said oxtails already. I'm going to hold you to it. You love oxtails? I love yeah. oxtails. Oh, she be cooking. I'm going to hold you to it. But if you eat mine, you ain't going to want to eat it nowhere hey, else. Come on. Bro, yeah, you lost weight, feel. didn't you? A little bit. I know you lost mm -hmm. weight. No, the TV just make you look No, that nigga was big back I seen that nigga was big. How much did you lose? I don't even know. 
I, I listen. I don't even gauge it. I be doing my boxing during the week and stuff like that. I'm on my uh, Doctor Sabia uh, full little regiment. You know what I mean? Oh, you doing it? Yeah, is I it got easy? Like, I got like nine. Or is it hard? Oh, it's easy. I got like I mean, look make, good. It make you feel better. Because a friend of you mine did that, but what she did, you have to cut. You eat like all vegetables. That's what she did. No, I ain't doing that. I she got. Said she did that I got one. The, I got the nine different pills that I take every day. So that's nine. all you got to do is take that. I take I take the CMOS plus. I take the um, the the blood cleaner. I take the. Um, what is the blood cleaner called? Um, it's like uh, what's that one I have? At the house, the one that... Yeah, I don't remember the name what of that. Gap, blood it Purifier. Gap pill. It was Gap yeah. It's called Blood Purifier. Really? Okay. It's a Good. Blood Purifier. You got the detox. You got your male balance. You got your electric greens. Um, and you feel better just like... Oh, yeah. But you, have you changed you, the way how you eat? For the most part, I don't eat a lot of fast food anyway. Me neither. Well, um, I, do, I, I meal prep well. during the week for the most part. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to, you know what I mean? You got to dig in. <laughs> I, I came out here. I said, I got to give me some turkey legs. Turkey, you know, shout out to turkey, Leon, man. Turkey's not bad, though. It's just with all the other oh, stuff. Oh, he's going to put that in stuff there. in there. I'm putting the mac oh, on there. I'm oh, he's stuffing it. Like, you've had yeah, it yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How actually, was it? We actually had, uh, I had it plenty of times before, but we actually had the uh, the truck come to oh, okay. our uh, cannabis hard. event yesterday. So, oh, okay. man. That's yeah. dope. How big was 420 being down it here? It was dope. That's hard. Like, like what man? And that's why y'all came because y'all because y'all yeah. stressed. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it yeah. was a lot of um, you know, the analytics. But Texas show, is not even a lot of legal, though. Yeah, well, but we it's working a, it's, on a lot it's, of stuff. It's a gray area. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. How does that work? Well, people just want to be the first to come out of here. Yeah, and you know, get the ball rolling too. So because once it's it happening. does, it's happening regardless. So once where it's, can once they it's find ready, your strand? Oh, is everywhere. It, it's everywhere? So everywhere. you can go online and order? Any, no, you can't order online. <laughs> Any, if you come to L.A., you go to uh, Vegas, you go to all the places that is 100% That's legal. legal. You go Oklahoma. to Oklahoma. Yeah. You should have it everywhere. Okay. Big cheap products. Wow, everywhere. that's crazy. So if you're not going to find the... Um, you know, if you're not going to find that, you'll find the carts at least. So, Cookie, that's y'all's competitor. Cookies and homies too, though. Yeah, I know. Shout out to I cookies. met them guys. Backpack boys. I met them before every day Jungle started. Boys. They, oh, they, how long yeah. they been in the game? They been in the game for a long time. They was like mm-hmm. one of the first ones on they, the, they, on the, and, on the map. And they one of the biggest. Or well, they are the biggest. That's right. Do they, they do cool. edibles? They do everything. Big Chief. Everything. She asking because she interested. I'm what? Gonna edibles, <laughs> Delta 8. Uh, what is Delta 8? Delta 8 is a cross between um, cannabis. It's a little bit of cannabis and it's a it's a... It's not to really get you as high. Yeah, it's like more like for medical and stuff too. Okay. So kind of like with the CBD. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a, it's a little. It's like the CBD with a little bit of marijuana infused. Got in. it. No, I got to get yeah. these guys out of here. You know, man, I ain't going to lie, man. Me and you guys was dope, man. Man, like, appreciate I, it. I, I appreciate came it. down here. I hurry up and got in the car. I told you. you didn't say, I'm coming to Houston. I'm coming to Houston. Yeah. I'm going to make yeah. something happen. And then shout out to my boy, man, G-Luck and B-Dumb for G and B uh, Productions, Productions mm-hmm. for letting us come in, interview it's a dope you guys. Studio. Man, it's Super the dopest dope. studio. And, yeah. they, and, and it's so much history in here, man. When I interviewed them, and I'm about to talk to him in a minute, I'm trying to get yeah. him on this platform. But uh, he told me about Boosie coming in when he had counseling mm-hmm. doing his doing a lot of his music and I thought that was just live yeah, yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. right here this is where he was at one of my favorite yeah rappers. this is where he was at you know so man just to, the southern uh, the southern hospitality different ain't it y'all it is though 100% <laughs> sure, nigga wanna take you to the house with him feed yeah. you again oh, yeah. like, y'all, hey. y'all can fly from uh, Dallas we gonna send y'all back from Dallas you yeah. know what I'm talking about hey man thank you guys for coming on the show man appreciate it we love you guys bro it's been another great segment a Boss Talk 101. Shout out to Boss Talk. Bosses Talk. Let's do it. We out.